Are you a high school student or a parent of a high school student that's looking to reduce the cost of college? AP, IB, and dual enrollment credits just might be the answer. I'm Kathy with College in 321. Everybody wants to save money on the cost of college. And one of the best ways to do that is to utilize those AP, IB, and dual enrollment credits you earn in high school to reduce the number of courses you need to take in college and save some money in the process. I know you're going to get a lot of great information out of this video, along with all the other College in 321 videos, so go ahead and subscribe. All right, let's take a look at how we can evaluate colleges based on the use of AP, IB, and dual enrollment courses. So this is gonna be a five-step process. The first step is to determine how many credit hours you can receive for a college using AP credits. Let's face it. Every single college has their own policies about how to use these college credits. Uh, for the sake of brevity for this video, I'm gonna to refer to everything as AP credits. Um, whether it's AP, IB, or dual enrollment, it'll just make this process a little easier to describe. So when you're evaluating these colleges, go to their website and look for information on how many AP credits will be accepted by a college. Each one's gonna be different, and you're gonna to wanna to know that number before you get started, because it really does make a difference. There are gonna be some colleges where they may just take two AP classes for credit. There may be other colleges where you can use all of your AP credits, and that can only mean good things. So be sure you take a look, go into the search bar for each college, and find out how many college credits they will accept towards a degree. Okay, the next step, step two, is to determine which AP exam scores have earned you credit at each college. So here's the thing, not every college is going to accept every AP exam score. First of all, if you didn't pass the test, which usually for AP credits means a three, four, or five on the test, generally speaking, colleges aren't gonna accept it. So that eliminates those scores or the classes that you took and you didn't even take the exam. Those aren't gonna count for anything either. So the first thing we wanna do is figure out how many of those AP courses will count towards credit. Let's look at the College of Charleston and see how they distribute AP credits. So what we have here is a PDF that's out on the College of Charleston website, and it gives an overview of all the AP courses that they offer credit for. It's laid out pretty well here for College of Charleston. You'll see that there is um, the, the list of AP exams, the score that can be used to receive credit, how many credit hours you will receive for that course based on the score you received, and what is the College of Charleston course equivalent. So basically, what are you substituting your AP credit for at that college? Let's take AP US History, for example. As I mentioned before, usually you need to score at least a three on the AP exam to receive credit at colleges. For some colleges, it may be you need a four, and some colleges, it may be you need a five to get any credit for it. In the case of College of Charleston, they will accept a three on the AP US History exam, and you will get three credit hours for that AP course. And that AP US History course will substitute as a History 201 class. If you receive a four or five on the AP US History exam, you will actually get credit for two history courses. You will get six credit hours towards your degree by getting a four or five on an exam. So this is a fantastic opportunity where you take 
one AP class in high school and actually get credit for completing two college courses. That's a deal. Okay, so now the third step is to see how these AP credits actually get applied towards a degree. Okay, let's go back to the College of Charleston AP credit distribution. In this case, let's take a look at European history. It shows here that if you get a three on European history, you get three credits and it counts towards history 102. If you get a four or a five in AP European history, you're gonna get six credits for history 101 and history 102. So how do these credits actually get applied to graduate from college? Let's look at the general education requirements for the College of Charleston. You'll see here they have a series of required sections that you have to complete courses in. Let's take a look at history. You'll see you'll need to complete one course in pre-modern history and one course in modern history from the list of approved courses, satisfying the history general education requirement of six credit hours. So for general education, you need six credit hours from these areas. You will notice history 101, the rise of European history, and history 102, modern Europe. By taking that AP European history class, you have now, and scoring a four or a five on that exam, you have now completed six credit hours in the general education requirements for the College of Charleston. Boom. Okay, now let's suppose that you want to be a history major. Let's take a look at how credits can be used towards completing your major. Here at the College of Charleston, I'm looking at their page for a BA in history, and they're gonna give us all the requirements. And you'll see that it requires about 30 plus credit hours to complete this major. You're gonna need one required course uh, in History 299, The Historian's Craft. And then it comes down and looks at five areas of distribution that the history courses must be completed in. So they've got pre-modern, I'm looking through this, modern European, Let's go down to, oh look, you have to take courses in US history. Hmm, some of these courses are looking familiar. Let's go back and look at the AP credits for AP US history. You get three credits for history 201. If you get a four or five on the AP US history exam, you get six credits for history 201 and history 202. Six credits, and look at this. History 201 and History 202, but you only need one to satisfy the history courses in the distribution area for the United States. So you're saying, oh gosh, I can only use one of those two courses. They're giving me six credits. That's a bummer. Well, not necessarily. If we scroll down a little further, You need to complete nine additional credit hours from any of the above five distribution areas or in any History 200 level or higher course. So guess what? One of those courses can now be used as completing an elective. So this goes to show that there are many ways that these AP credits can be used. So let's recap this section. Where can we apply AP credits? So there's generally three ways. One, to meet core or required curriculum requirements. Two, to meet the course requirements for a major or minor. Or three, to fulfill general elective requirements. So sometimes once you complete your core requirements and you complete your major requirements, there's still often um, additional electives that you have to complete to reach the traditional 120 credit hours to complete a degree. Okay, 
So that was an example of college at Charleston. And I will say the rules for applying AP credits can change. So this is an example. Don't take this as what it is today for College of Charleston or what it's going to be tomorrow or even what it looks like for all colleges because each one is going to have their own set of rules for how to apply AP credits and how they will get applied to specific course requirements. Keep that in mind. And if you're lucky, you might find schools like College of Charleston that as of this date does allow you to apply a single AP uh, course to both a core requirement and a major, double counting it. Gotta love that. Okay, we're almost at the good part. Hang in there. Now we're going to count the number of usable AP credits to start evaluating how much those AP credits are worth in terms of the cost of college. Okay, let's do a little case study. So let's look at two separate colleges, College A and College B. And what do we know about what they cost? Well, College A costs about $17,000 per semester, or if you figure it for four years, about $136,000, assuming you're going for eight semesters. Then we've got College B. It costs $15,000 a semester, or $120,000 for four years. So if we just evaluate the cost of each college just based on the numbers they present on your financial aid form, you're going to say, looks like we need to go with College B if we're really financially conscious about this, because you're going to save $16,000 by going with College B. And for some families, that's huge. And that's where the evaluation stops for many folks. But that's not what we're talking about here. We need to look at what our AP credits can do for us to save us some money. So now again, we're looking at College A and College B, but now we're going to take into consideration our AP credits and how that affects the cost. So you'll see College A, it requires 120 credit hours to obtain a degree. At College A, we have earned and apply to a degree 18 credit hours. We went through this whole exercise and figured out that we can earn 18 credit hours with our AP credits. That leaves us 102 credit hours to complete at College A. In this scenario at College B, it's the same 120 credit hours to complete the degree, but we have only earned and applied six credit hours because of the rules of the college are a little bit different and they don't really allow you to use AP credits uh, as liberally. So our remaining credit hours required to graduate is 112 credit hours at College B. With College A, we have the 18 credit hours. We can reduce our time in college by a semester. Traditionally, 15 credit hours is equivalent to one semester of college. Wow we get to reduce our time and cost in college by one semester. So at College A, it was $17,000 semester. We're only going to go for seven semesters. So the total cost of College A is $119,000. At College B, with only six credit hours of AP credit, that's not going to get us a full semester. It will likely still require eight semesters to complete that degree and $120,000. But wait, there's more. Okay, so now let's say that you decided on College A. Let's, let's look at what else you're saving besides money. So if you're cutting a semester out of the time you're spending in college, what would you be doing with that time? Hopefully, you're going to work. 
For example, let's say that during that semester that you would have been in college, that you now don't have to be in college because you use those AP credits. Let's say that you earn six months of salary at $30,000. So for college A, you've now saved $1,000 off of the total cost. Plus, you have the opportunity to earn $30,000 that you wouldn't have earned if you stayed in for all eight semesters. You're ahead of the game just by reducing the number of semesters you're in college. Plus, you're not gonna take out additional debt and additional loans to complete that final semester. Those loans come with interest. That's interest you're not paying. So overall, College A really seems to be a really good, financially savvy choice. I know this is all a huge process, but it really is important to know how you can cut the cost of college using AP credits. If you have a younger high school student that's contemplating whether or not to take that extra AP course or not, showing them the information in this video may just convince them that there's a lot in it for them to step up and take that extra AP course if they're going to do well in it. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Please go ahead and subscribe to the College in 321 YouTube channel and we'll bring you more of these informative videos in the future.